Being educated on a subject means you have a better chance of understanding its mysteries than an average person. But it doesn't mean you can solve all of them. That's true for every field of science. There are times when the greatest minds in the world find themselves baffled by a phenomenon, incident, or discovery, and all their learning is no use to them as they attempt to find answers. Watch this video and you'll see what we mean. There was a mystery on Kemp Beach in Queensland, Australia in October 2021 when this brown jelly-like blob appeared overnight. The initial opinion of experts is that this is a creature of some kind, most likely a jellyfish. But it doesn't look like any kind of jellyfish that's been seen before. Some people suggest that it might be a lion's mane jellyfish, but it isn't the correct size. Another suggestion was that it could be a tomato jellyfish, but that doesn't seem quite right either. It's still probably fair to assume that it's a jellyfish, but it might be the first recorded example of a previously unknown classification of the creature. That means it might have a sting, possibly even a dangerous one, which is why experts were so reluctant to touch it. The creature has since been taken away, but we're still waiting on an official classification. Perhaps this is a reminder that the seas are still largely a mystery to us, and there are potentially thousands of undiscovered creatures hiding down there in the dark. Let's go from Australia to the United Kingdom for a mystery that's charmingly British. In October 2021, photographer Ashley Cooper was out walking in the woodland of Blee Tarn in the Lake District when he came across this strange site in the middle of a forest. It seems that somebody came here and set up a table and chairs for a traditional English tea for two and then disappeared off the face of the earth. It's such a jarring and unusual sight that Ashley wondered whether it might be a guerrilla art installation. But upon closer inspection, he found that someone had eaten half of the cakes and drunk around half a bottle of champagne. There are no hotels or residential buildings of any kind within four miles of here. None of the items left behind are cheap, so it doesn't make sense for anyone to go to this much trouble to set up the meal and then abandoned everything once they were done. What happened to these people? Why set up a table in such a remote location in the first place? We have no answers. As a species, we've launched hundreds of objects into space, but not all of them stay there. Some of them fall back down to Earth, and most of them fall into the sea. But not all of them. An object falling from space seems to be the most likely explanation for this 90-pound metal sphere, which was found on a beach in the Bahamas in February 2021. The titanium object is covered in Russian writing, which furthers the idea of this being a piece of a Russian spacecraft. To be more specific, it might be a hydrazine propellant tank, which could have been a part of a satellite. The Russian text informs us that the object, whatever it is, has an operating temperature range between minus 170 and minus 196 degrees Celsius and a capacity of 43 liters, and that it was manufactured in 2018. If it's a hydrazine propellant tank, its job would have been to squeeze propellant into the thrusters or engines of a rocket. How it came to be on a beach in the Bahamas is unknown, but it could have been washed up there after landing in the sea. The Russians have refused to confirm that the object is theirs, but that's not necessarily a surprise. There was a storm in the Welsh town of Barmouth in October 2021, and it disturbed the sand of the town's beach. Once it passed, residents were amazed to see that the storm had revealed the existence of some old train tracks, tracks that seemed to lead straight out into the sea. There's no historical record of a railway line ever existing on the beach, which makes the tracks something of a riddle. Some residents have speculated that they were used during the construction of a seawall during the 1930s. Others have wondered whether they might have been used to bring ships ashore for repair work during the days when Barmouth was a fishing town. In either case, you'd expect to find some acknowledgement of their existence in the town's records. Historian Hugh Griffith Roberts says the tracks are at least 40 years older than the seawall and might have been laid during the 19th century during the construction of a new sewage system in town. These are all fine guesses, but none of them has yet been proven correct. Legend has it that there was once a mighty kingdom called Cantor Gwalet in this part of the world, but the kingdom sank into the sea. Maybe this was its railway line. 
or maybe not. We're back on the topic of space debris now, or at least we think we are. This large, unidentified object was found in the Polish wilderness in September 2020 by a walker in the province of Świętokrzyski. They took pictures of it and noted that the object was metal and badly weathered. When it was reported on by her local newspaper, readers wondered whether it might have fallen from space. The problem with that theory is that anything this large falling from space would undoubtedly have caused a crater and damaged the trees around it, which isn't the case here. The presence of several empty beer bottles scattered around the bottom of the object suggests that the walker wasn't the first person to come across it. The degree of weathering suggests that it might have been in the forest for a very long time, but that doesn't get us any closer to working out what it is. The newspaper proposed that it could be a large cement mixer, but why would a discarded cement mixer be in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever seen anything like this before? If so, let us know in the comments. A lot of what we know about the so-called Mojave Megaphone can be discerned from its name. It's shaped like a megaphone, and it's in the Mojave Desert of Baker, California. Other than that, nobody knows anything about it. The large metal object is securely bolted to two rocks at the top of a 100-foot-high hill in the desert between Baker and Ludlow. Getting it here wouldn't have been easy, nor would installing and securing it. That suggests that it must have a purpose. But what could that purpose be? Is there some truth to the suggestion that it might have been used by the U.S. military to amplify the sound of a siren to alert locals when they carried out chemical or gas weapon tests in the area? If so, the military denies it. Are we looking at an art installation? That's possible, but the point of art is for people to see it. Erecting an installation like this in the middle of the desert seems to defeat the point. There isn't a clear history of when it was discovered or by who, so we don't even know how long it's been here. Nothing about the Mojave Megaphone makes sense. Let's check out another possible piece of space debris. This time, it's one that some people believe to have alien origins. This huge alleged UFO fragment was found in the remote Siberian village of Otradneski in March 2012. It's about the size of a family car and weighs 440 pounds. Locals found it in the forest on the outskirts of their village and were so alarmed by it that they strapped it to a trailer and dragged it back to the village before alerting authorities in Moscow. The authorities sent experts from the Russian space agency who examined it and said it's not space technology, but not everybody believes them. Their analysis confirmed that the object is at least partially made of titanium and isn't radioactive. Officials from NASA have also studied pictures of the object and say it's nothing to do with them, and nor does it look like any kind of launch vehicle or spacecraft they're aware of. That's where the alien theory comes from. If it's not a piece of a spaceship that began life on Earth, maybe it's a piece of a spaceship from elsewhere. That's far-fetched, but nobody's been able to come up with a satisfactory, logical explanation for its existence. Thanks to breakthroughs in technology, we can now see things that can't be seen by the naked human eye. LiDAR remote sensing technology has been responsible for a flurry of recent archaeological discoveries but perhaps none more important than this one from Tikal, Guatemala. We've always known that this was an important city to the ancient Maya, but until September 2021, we had no idea that they'd built a mighty citadel here. Without the assistance of LiDAR, these mounds look like nothing more than hills. With its assistance, though, we can see that the hills are actually artificial and contain countless ruined buildings. The most impressive of them is an 1,800-year-old citadel that looks more than a little like the world-famous citadel of Teotihuacan, albeit smaller. In fact, it looks so much like Teotihuacan that archaeologists don't think it's a coincidence. The building inside this mound was likely built to resemble Teotihuacan and represents a significant level of cultural exchange between the people of Teotihuacan and the people of Tico. That's an amazing discovery. But the mystery here is that the buildings were buried so completely that nothing was left visible. That must have been a deliberate act, but we don't know the reasons why. Perhaps we never will. 
It's time to check out another mysterious sea creature. This time, it's one that washed ashore at Wolf Island National Wildlife Refuge in South Georgia, USA in March 2018. The creature is so unusual that some experts have dismissed it as a high-quality hoax carried out by ingenious pranksters. The unclassified creature, which appeared to be in a state of advanced decomposition when it was found, looks a little like a frilled shark. It can't be a frilled shark, though, because it doesn't have gill slits. Marine biologist Quentin White of Jacksonville University is convinced it was a fake or a practical joke, but admits that it was a very good one. The Altamahaha is said to live or have lived in this part of the state. There's no serious suggestion that this is the cadaver of the mythical beast, but it could be the reason that someone staged a cadaver to look like it. Pictures were sent to the Smithsonian for examination, but the institution made no public comments about them. To add to the sense of mystery, the creature vanished before it could be taken away for further examination. Beaches must be good places to go looking for hard-to-explain discoveries. Here's another one from Palm Beach, Florida. It was discovered by environmentalists Heather Boland and Brian Galvin in April 2019, and they have some pretty strong suspicions about what it might be. If they're right, this strange disc-shaped object is a dish-aggregating device. It's a special kind of float used by fishermen to attract the tuna, marlin, and mahi-mahi that swim in these waters. The only thing stopping them from saying it's definitely a fish-aggregating device is that they've seen such devices before, and they're generally made of wood, whereas this is plastic. The objects come with netting attached to the underside, within which a small ecosystem is created to attract small fish. Those small fish, in turn, attract the larger fish that the fishing companies want to catch. An onboard GPS system keeps the company informed of the FAD's location so they can head out to them periodically and sweep up whatever's there. There's no sign of a GPS tracker or a net attached to this device. That doesn't mean it didn't have them once. Cable Spion is one of many ancient sites that tourists should go out of their way to see if they ever visit Cambodia. The riverbed here is covered in Hindu carvings, and those carvings can be found both above and beneath the water. The origins of these carvings are shrouded in mystery. It's likely, but not proven, that the first of them were created in the 11th century. They range in design from simple to sophisticated, with cobbles as the most basic hand-carved shapes here, and the most ornate being representations of Hindu deities created as reliefs on the rocks. The presence of the gods has earned K. Balspian the nickname Valley of 1000 Lingas. Many of the carved circular shapes were probably also representations of Shiva at one point, but time and running water have turned them into smooth lumps. This is such an elaborate site that it looks almost as if it might have been created as a setting for the latest Indiana Jones movie. But it's all real. It's a spectacular place to see, but a hard one to understand. When you were a child, you might have played with toy cars. If you did, that's something you had in common with children in the Bronze Age. The car didn't exist back then, of course, so instead they played with tiny model chariots like this one. This remarkable, intricately detailed toy is thought to be about 5,000 years old. It was discovered in Sagmatar, Turkey in 2017. Archaeologists found it inside a child's tomb where they also found a rattle with birds carved into its surface. It's likely that toys like this were only available to the children of high-ranking people and were probably made to order as opposed to being on the shelves of a local shop. The age of the toy is important because it takes us closer to the time when most historians believe the wheel was invented in Mesopotamia 5,500 years ago. We're told that wheels back then were solid disks of wood, and it's only around 4,000 years ago that lighter, hollow wheels started to appear. If this toy is 5,000 years old, it suggests that carriages and lightweight wheels existed long before we thought they did. It seems we can no longer even say when the wheel was invented with any certainty. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.